Are you new to Omega Strikers? Are you struggling to understand what all this means? Uh, what the... okay. Or are you chasing the ball around the field, having no idea what you're supposed to be doing? Well, good, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll give you a super basic introduction to every part of this brand new game, including strikers, controls, and trainings, as well as three gameplay tips that will give you a massive edge over your opponents early on. So let's learn how to play this game. This is the absolute beginner's guide to Omega Strikers. The first thing you'll want to do when opening up this game is choose a striker. You can find a full list of the strikers and their abilities by going to the main menu, clicking on this icon here, and then checking out each of them one by one. My main recommendation is to choose from this list of 6 strikers, which are the 1 star strikers, which means they're the easiest ones to use. These guys have mostly pretty simple to understand abilities like straight attacks and speed boosts that will allow you to get the hang of the basic gameplay without having to worry about complicated moves. My personal recommendation is Estelle, who has a really simple straight attack, a cone attack, and a teleport move. Her teleport allows her to move around quickly, and the two attacks are easy to use without long cooldowns. Kai is another great choice for beginners as he has extremely simple moves that take almost no time to learn. Estelle and Kai are both available right from the beginning, but some of the other 1 star strikers need to be bought from the store using in-game currency. Don't worry though, no actual money is required for these. There are three available control methods in this game. The first is controller, although this is currently not officially supported, and at least for me personally, with my DualSense controller, doesn't work at all. And then there's two keyboard and mouse options, one being MOBA controls, and the other being WASD. My personal recommendation, and the recommendation of most of the community, is WASD controls, so that's what we're going to use in this video. The most important thing to know about controlling your striker is that the position of your mouse cursor is what determines the direction of your shots. Usually when you're running around, your mouse won't do anything at all. However, the moment you press one of your abilities, you'll notice this ring and little arrow pop up around your striker, with the arrow aiming directly towards your cursor. Then when you hit the ball, it'll fly off in that direction. If you're having trouble keeping track of where your cursor is, resulting in mistakes like this, you can actually increase the size of the cursor by going into settings and changing this option here. It admittedly doesn't look great, but it might help you avoid own goaling, so that's a dub in my book. Trainings are something that I initially found kind of confusing. However, I think that most of that confusion is down to the ugly design of this screen. They're actually pretty simple. First and foremost, you can access your trainings by clicking on your profile name. Yes, that is actually a button. And then going down here and clicking create new on either goalie or forward trainings. In essence, trainings are basically your striker's loadout. Depending on which training you select, you'll get different buffs and changes to your abilities. Each striker can select three different trainings, two for their own unique training style, indicated by these icons here, and one from any of the five styles, indicated by this icon here, which is called the prismatic slot. For further info on what these styles mean, click on this exclamation mark. If we take Estelle as our example again, you can see that these two icons are the same. Both of them are the sniper style, meaning she has to select two from the sniper tree. And then her third slot is the prismatic slot, meaning she can choose one from any tree. The only difference between the strikers is that some have two different styles here, and some, like Estelle, have only one. The third slot is prismatic for all of the strikers. The 
The only other thing I want to say is that you should go and check out the store because in there you can buy two different trainings for each style using in-game currency. Some of these are really effective and definitely worth picking up. Okay, so now that you've got your striker, figured out your controls, and chosen your trainings, now it's time for some gameplay tips. My first tip is don't always hit the ball as soon as you can. Sometimes it's totally fine to smash the ball as soon as it comes near you. This can be a great way to keep up the speed of the play, and hopefully catch your opponent's napping. However, there are so many situations when it's actually much better to delay your hit instead. For instance, in this situation here, I could of course just smash the ball immediately. However, then my opponent could easily just hit it back straight past me. So instead, I do this. I stay with the ball and don't do anything. And then, as soon as my opponent hits it, I hit it back straight past him and score a goal. And this technique isn't just effective in offense, it's also something to keep in mind all over the field, including in defense as the goalie. My second tip is aim your hits carefully. One thing I see so many lower ranked players doing is just ping-ponging the ball back and forth between each other. Basically, just trying to hit the ball as hard as they can at all times, and usually directly at their opponent. So my first recommendation on this is for defensive situations. Instead of always clearing the ball directly forward, which can often result in it coming straight back towards you, try to clear it to the sides instead. This is often much safer, gives your team time to recover, and might even allow you to counterattack. And my other recommendation on this is to try two different types of passing plays. One is a pass to yourself, where you hit the ball off a nearby wall and then hit it again straight afterwards. And the other is a pass to your teammate, where you hit the ball to them and then they continue with their own play. Basically, just try to think about where you should be placing your hits. Should you be clearing the ball to the sides instead of directly ahead? And can you pass to either yourself or your teammates before smashing the ball away? And my third and final tip is use orbs wisely. Orbs are those little round things that spawn around the field at various times and in various places. And they can be used to achieve a whole bunch of different things. One is to gain buffs, which will temporarily make you stronger in different ways depending on the type of orb you pick up. Another is to get kills, which will grant you XP as well as taking one of the opponents out of the game for a while. The reason you can get kills is that orbs spawn close to the edges of the map, so you can simply wait until your opponent wanders off near one and then knock him off the edge for a nice kill. And the last way to use orbs is just to get experience. Every time you pick up an orb, you get some XP. And these can help you level up, become more powerful, and dominate the field. And that's it. That's all the info I've got for you guys today on Omega Strikers. I'm personally absolutely loving this game right now, and I definitely plan to do more videos about it. So if you have any questions or you want me to cover anything in particular in a future video, let me know down in the comments. And come join the Mogs Discord server if you want to hang out with me and other Mogs viewers. And go check out my second channel if you want to see me play games with live commentary. The links for everything are in the video description. And like the video if you liked it, dislike it if not, subscribe for more videos like this as well as a whole bunch of other gaming content. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.